Hi everyone, I'm Jeremy Simon with 3D Universe, and welcome to episode 24 of 3D Universe Untethered. In this bi-weekly live stream series, we get to hear from people across varying industries about the great things they're doing with digital fabrication. As always, you can visit 3duniverseuntethered.com to see all of our upcoming episodes and access recordings of our previous episodes. You can also get 3D Universe Untethered as a podcast through any of the major podcast platforms. And if you're watching us live on Facebook right now, please join in the conversation by posting comments on that live event page. We're going to try to keep an eye on those during the episode, or at least touch on those by the end before we wrap up so that we can bring those questions into the discussion. So in today's episode, we're going to be exploring the creation of 3D printed fabrics and fashion. We have two very exciting guests with us today, artist Susana Marques, an artist based in Portugal, and Luisa Mendes Aruda, a Brazilian artist and Enable volunteer based in Portugal, who are doing amazing work with 3D printed fabrics. So to walk us through this discussion, I'm pleased to welcome today's co-host Jen Owen, who most of you know already, and let's have our two guests join us also on screen and uh, go through some introductions here. Welcome everyone. Hi. Hi. Hello. So, welcome, Susanna and Luisa. So glad you could be with us today. I'm going to embarrass you guys just for a few minutes here because I want our audience to get to know you and your backgrounds a little bit better before we start discussing. So I'm just going to read through a little bit of a bio that I have for each of you here, if you don't mind, starting with Susanna. Uh, Susanna Marques is 25 years old, a PhD candidate with a master's in fashion design with an emphasis on technology. She's self-taught and passionate about the arts and fashion. It was in technology that she found the difference in what she did. She's also a temporary lecturer at the University of Beira Interior. And by the way, sorry for my pronunciation. I'm sure I won't get some of these right. And she seeks to convey the students to the students the magic behind the processes that she uses. She loves the world of research, but believes that the ideal would be to bring together the industrial and business world and the academic world. She considers that both should feed off each other and diverge less. It is with this in mind that since the age of 21, she's been looking for the integration of additive manufacturing and other technologies in the fashion area, focusing on everyday textiles. She believes that for every conventional textile, there will be a corresponding 3D printed version. Very cool. So glad to have you with us, Susanna. And uh, Luisa Mendes Arruda. Luisa was born in the city of Vitoria, state of Espirito Santo in Brazil in 1989. She's a PhD student in textile engineering at the University of Minho in Portugal, holds a master's degree in history and art criticism from the Federal University of Espirito Santo and an MBA in business management from the Getulio Vargas Foundation in Brazil. Luisa is a fashion designer and researcher at Fibernamics, the international R&D platform for the development of innovative products based on natural fibers and composites in Portugal. Luisa was member at the National Board of Fashion Cultural Policies with the Ministry of Culture in Brazil from 2015 to 2017. As a researcher and designer, her areas of interest and expertise are wearable technologies, smart textiles, prostheses, and 3D printing. She's been an active part of the Enable volunteer community, of which Jen and I are both active parts and co-founders, and has presented her work at past Enable conferences. So. Again, Luisa, so glad to have you with us. Thank you both again for joining us. I'm excited and with, about this. And with that, I'm going to kind of hand things over to Jen here because I need to sort of, I'm going to need to do some screen sharing today. Now, I will say this for our guests that I know some of you listen to our, our series on the podcast and it's wonderful. We think you'll get a lot out of this just listening to it, but that we are going to show you some things today that you are definitely going to want to see. So if you're listening to this in your car on the way to work, definitely check out the video later just so you can see some of this amazing work that we're going to be showing you. But since I'll be kind of focused on doing some of the screen sharing, I'm going to hand things over to you, Jen, and let you kind of take the lead from here. Sounds good. Um, thank you both for joining us. I know that we are quite spread out in time zones and it is a lot later for you than it is for us. So um, we adjusted our normal time to make it so that you guys weren't propping your eyelids open with toothpicks. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love to learn a little more about each of your backgrounds and how you guys both um, got started in fashion design. I know that my youngest um, kiddo started making sock puppets and, you know, using paper and cardboard and duct tape and all kinds of stuff when, when they were little. I'm wondering how each of you got started. And um, Susanna, would you like to go first? 
Yeah, um, as it was said before, um, all my academic background was in fashion design. Um, after taking my master's, I started um, adventure in technology, and my PhD is even more focused on on that. Uh, almost a cliche. <laughs> I designed clothes since I was very young. I grew up almost in the textile industry. Um, my aunt, my aunt, um, has a small factory, and um, with all kinds of scraps of fabrics, uh, I made clothes from from my Barbies, <laughs> thread and needle. Um, I would everything in place. And then there were uninterrupted hours of fashion shows um, <laughs> and clothing exchanges. So when I wanted to start making my my own clothes um, at 14, I started to undo my clothes and see how the pattern was to go back to sewing and repeat yeah. the pat pattern for new garments. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's really cool. It's, I know that. It's, it's so funny. I just have to say, I'm thinking of when I was a kid, how I used to love to take toys apart to try to figure out how they work. Mm -hmm. I guess we all have a little bit of that for what we're what we're passionate about, you know? Yeah, yeah. I had a. I had. I. I used to be the the Barbie fashion designer when I was younger too, but mine was more crochet, and I learned how to make a circle. So most of mine were just skirts. <laughs> yeah. Luisa, how about you? Oh, actually, it was a big surprise for my family. <laughs> uh, do fashion design and study fashion design was not a big dream for me. Oh, wow. And uh, it's funny. It's a funny story. Um, a friend of mine said to me, well, let's try to do fashion design course during the night as a second option. <laughs> and I said, oh, okay, I will try. And in the beginning of the course, I feel that that was for me. <laughs> since I have a very special relation with the garment and about what the garment can represent for people. Mm -hmm. And when I start my graduation degree, I starting I start to realize that that could be a career for me. Wow. That's how I approach. I have approached this uh, perspective. That's really awesome. And um, so you both started out with just fashion. How did? 3D printing come into the picture? How did um, you get involved with 3D printed fabrics? Uh, I can go. Okay. Um, in the beginning, um, I think, in the beginning, very beginning, 10 years ago, when I started doing some collections, I was very, very fascinated by Frank Jerry's work, the architecture. Mm -hmm and how he design and how he achieve can achieve that kind of form and i think through a normal uh, textile sometimes it's not pos possible to have that kind of structure mm -hmm. uh, since the garment a knitting or a woven they are very flexible and sometimes we can achieve a formal form, a, a typical form. And I think through the 3D printing, we can create uh, in like a origami. We can structurize in some way that uh, typical modeling is not, through a typical modeling is not possible. Mm -hmm. So I started to think about 3D printing as a way to materialize and try to turn the flexible textile into a rigid material in order to achieve some kind of structures. That's amazing. Susanna? Yeah, so uh, in the beginning of my master's degree, 
I was trying to find my identity uh, as a designer and um, I was looking for some differential, um, something that I could do that will be my mark. <laughs> mm -hmm. So um, uh, the 3D printers was kind of accidental <laughs> because uh, just crossed my path and uh, I started learning about 3D printers and from that day was day after day was kind of magical <laughs> to me. I love to deal with 3D printers. Yeah. So it, it's a fascinating world and um, well, <laughs> I never um, I never leave the 3D the 3D printers until now. <laughs> Yeah. So what what have you both found that you are able to do with 3D printed fabric work that you wouldn't be able to do in a traditional sense? Um, Susanna, you want to go first? Okay. Um, I see this as a different thing. Um, I, I read a lot, a lot about this subject and um, we are um, is to think that um, additive manufacturing allowed us uh, more fascinating um, and complex forms, as uh, Louise also said. And it's true, but I see other perspective. For me, it's the process that um, was really good and sustainable, but my, my main goal that, um, is essentially recreate the normal text, the normal textures, the normal, the normal structures, and bring the normal to additive manufacturing. Because in my opinion, um, creating something really, really amazing is the most easiest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's great. Thank you. Uh, Luisa? Uh, well, I work also with uh, smart textiles, which means that I functionalize smart uh, traditional fabrics. Through traditional fabrics, we have mostly two, uh, let's see, three kinds. Uh, the woven that is based in some in this structure, the knitting that is composed by loopings, and then no woven, which is layer by layer. Mm -hmm. And I think through the 3D printing, we can uh, work to achieve those structures, uh, to replicate or mimic those uh, typical structures, which is difficult sometimes, very difficult, especially the knitting ones. Mm -hmm. But uh, also it's a open window to try new ways, new forms and um, new schemes. Mm -hmm. uh, what means go beyond those typical structures. Uh, and for me, this is a, also a challenge, but it's also fascinating. Yeah, it is fascinating. I hadn't really thought about the different kinds of clothing I'm wearing and how they're made. Mm -hmm. <laughs> now I am, and I can't stop thinking about it. <laughs> what, what can you do with 3D printing that you couldn't before? You know, how is that, how has it changed over the time that you've been experimenting? Um, for me, more than just think about the material, mm -hmm. it's about the form. Yeah. Since I like to print my textiles, mm -hmm. to modeling through those uh, pieces. Uh, so I imagine a 3D printing technique as my Lego fabric which means oh. I can print in a metaphoric way, I can print my parts, which are my fabrics. And through those uh, parts, I build a garment that I want, but sometimes I don't know the form yet. So it's a, it's a really a free exercise to discover a path or a modeling, uh, a complex or a normal form uh, when I have those p 
pieces already printed. So for me, more than just create the entire garment and just press the button. Mm -hmm. Print it all. And it's more important, print piece by piece and try to figure out what can be done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Susanna? So for me, it's, it's about um, as a designer, I use it to, to just buy the fabrics. And mm -hmm. now I'm able to create uh, every single um, particularity that I want in the fabric. So that's really cool and change a lot of things because I can uh, choose if will be more stretchy, um, more tough, more uh, more texture. And um, I love that. Mm -hmm. I am curious. Um... Are, are 3D printable fabrics washable? How do you clean them? They are washable. Uh -huh. They do. Yeah. Uh, Carefully. The, the filament <laughs> that I use, they are washable. But so they, they are washable and it's not so difficult. Um, I can say that I put my fabrics in the regular mach washing machine with mm -hmm. all really? my clothes. And, oh, wow. yes. and some of my fabrics already have more than 80 washes. Wow. wow. That is a surprise. I did not expect that these could hold up in a washing machine. Yeah. I think washability I... is not the problem. Mm -hmm. So maybe uh, other comfort requirements are uh, some specific topics that we really should achieve in the future as thermal regulating properties, which means the our textile, our printed textile should have uh, thermal uh, has uh, permeability to wear water vapor, and we do not have these yet. Hmm. Yeah, when I think just about the filament, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, up here okay. in uh, Washington, we are in getting ready to for, for winter. So I'm starting to look for waterproof heat heat holding in materials, and it'll be really cool to see that happen in 3D printing. So I have to ask a couple. I, I, I don't want to get too much into the technical side of things, but that's, that's kind of my focus. So I, I have to ask about... Um, just want to talk a bit about the hardware that you're using. We're going to be showing in a little while some of both of your work, your projects. And when people see that, I know that a lot of our 3D printing users, the first question they're going to have is, oh my goodness, what kind of a machine do you need to be able to do this? And most would assume that it's a very high-end machine. So and we had a little discussion about this before, and I was surprised by what you told me. So tell us what you're using to do these 3D printed fabrics that we're going to be looking at. Let's start with you, Louise. So what, what kind of a 3D printer? This okay. is an a, a FDM type, right? It's FDM type. It's not a... Uh, um, it's a good machine. Mm -hmm. uh, the name is Hello B Prusa. It's a 3D printer made in Portugal okay. with two extruders and one nozzle of 0 0.4 millimeters and the okay. other 0 0.8 millimeters. Okay. It's just this. One I use just for flexible filaments and the other one for PLA, ABs and carbon based materials. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and you, Susanna? Uh, my three D printer is probably the most no <laughs> no this three D printer is the uh, Anet uh, A eight. Okay, yeah, very. I, now I have uh, just recently I have the Tronxy X five, okay. but um, I start and I keep with Anet. You still going back to that one? So these are very, for anyone not familiar with these, these are very affordable, you know, very kind yeah. of basic 3D printers. It's There's nothing very basic. special about them. Yes. You know, you have a, a, maybe a heated bed and in your case, two nozzles, Luis, and that's about it, right? Nothing else special about them. I'm guessing you have direct drive extruders for the flexibles? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I, I just thought that was worth pointing out because I was very surprised to, when I have seen the work that we're about to show here. I couldn't believe that you guys were creating this all on, on such ordinary and basic printers. It's great. 
Yeah, I'm curious what kind of materials you're using for 3D printed fabrics. Um, you know, I'm I'm just getting started with 3D printing, and so I'm using tough PLA and you know stuff like that. But I'm I'm wondering if you guys use special filaments or using the the regular filaments, or if you're having filaments created specifically for you. Um, Susanna, would you like to go first? Um, I start printing um, chain mails and uh, it was in DIA, but um, it was really quickly that understand that will not work <laughs> for fabric. So I start using the flexible ones and um, I use fewer flex from Ripperos. Um, but I, I use during um, a year, maybe. And uh, I, I start thinking, thinking that I need uh, more flexibility, more comfort, a lot of uh, needs that uh, textiles have. So I start creating my own filaments, and now I have um, a TPU and a TPA uh, from 38, that is, uh, that is from Sture, the filament. So I use from uh, 38 until 98 and I already print with some natural fibers. So this this was another area, and I, I don't want to get us too far into the, the technical rabbit hole that we could go down here, but I was fascinated when I saw this, Suzanne, in your notes, because I, I you had made mention of that, and I thought maybe it was a typo when I saw 30A. I've never heard of people printing with stuff that flexible. I mean, I've seen people doing 60A, but 30A is very soft, flexible material, so... Um, what have, have you had to do anything special? I, I'm guessing you have to print very slowly and, and that kind of thing. Uh, well, it's not so slowly because I already print um, 140 millimeters per second. Wow, okay. Flexible. So that means you really uh, have your no, printer set up well for this. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, okay. But I, I, I build my, my own Extruders, and um, I have some exchanges in, uh, in printers. Okay, so you've yeah. done some custom work on your printer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Louisa, how about you? I use uh, for garments. I use the flexible ones and the commercial ones. Actually, as Susanna said, um, TPU and TPA from Filaflex. Well, from Rick Rose, mm -hmm. which is a Spanish company. And when I need uh, a specific uh, parts, sometimes I print with ABS, a medical ABS, uh, and also uh, filaments based on, uh, with carbon based materials. And I think is this. Mm -hmm. hmm. Really cool. Um, yes. This is so cool. <laughs> Can you guys tell me a little bit about um, the overall process of creating 3D printed fabrics? Like how you go from concept to it just happening? Like, how do you make it happen? Do you print in little chunks or do you have like, does it come out like a sewing machine kind of thing? I don't know, it's, I'm trying to imagine it in my brain. <laughs> so you want maybe you walk us through your process from start to finish a little bit, just at a high level. Um, yeah. Should we start with Louisa? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Oh, uh, actually, is the process of developing uh, a product, or uh, being more exactly the process of describing or creating a collection. The first step is the concept that I want to to discuss. I highlight the, po the points that need to be addressed and I actually do some sketches and then I go to any first everything starts by the by one white paper <laughs> uh, then I go to co the computer uh, try to modeling what I have in mind and create a pattern that could achieve what I am thinking. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I do a lot of, 
I do a lot of samples and print it and I can see if that samples can be tension negated um, if uh, the pattern agree is in accordance with the concept that I have in mind the process is something like this it's mm -hmm. working it's ongoing process and sometimes I, I start it again I before we go it. on to Suzanne I want to ask one other question Louis so what software do you use when you're doing your design work what are you using for CAD work uh, it's also a very simple software it's I and uh, I use fusion three and 360. 360 yeah excellent I use that myself yeah. it's a very popular platform it's a free it's a free software yeah wonderful how about you Susanna so I'm start living the, um, some traditional ways as a sketching and everything because I'm starting to um, avoid um, all the use, uses of physical materials mm -hmm. so everything goes digital and um, I create um, I, uh, I create basically everything in one time because we have the concept in mind and for example in Cool 3D or Marvelous Designer I can uh, create the garment or as a fusion or a blender we know all the software um, we can create the garment and in the same point, you can do the sketch part because you are already um, doing the garment. You are doing the patterning, uh, but the patterning making, and you you are already at most parts of it. So then you put in the slicer and uh, the physical form um, as achieved only in 3D printer that bring the garment to life. Mm -hmm. That's great. Thank you for sharing that. It's really cool to listen about the process. Uh, I'm a very visual learner, so um, you guys are painting great uh, word pictures from my brain. <laughs> um, I think we're going to go ahead and start looking at some of your projects now, Jeremy, right? Excellent. Yeah, I've been looking forward to this. So I'm going to go ahead and share a window here, and I'll have to sort of switch which window we're looking at here as we go. But um, give me just a moment to find the one. To, we're going to start with looking at one of Susanna's projects here. And so I'll start with this window. And we'll go to the first tab here. Okay, so hopefully you are seeing what I'm seeing. And uh, yeah. over to you, Jen. Yeah, can you tell us a little bit about this um, first garment here? The, um, this shirt was made from the Whitfield Flex. And it was my first uh, flexible garment. Oh, wow. In a fashion show. <laughs> mm -hmm. Amazing. Just gonna zoom in here a little. That's beautiful. So and so Susanna, these are. Do you know the thickness of this of your sample? Oh, sorry, I, I don't understand. If you have in mind the thickness. Oh, the, uh, yeah, the thickness. Yeah. This uh, this is um a very thin uh, <laughs> because of uh, of millimeter. But um, now I'm using even lower thickness. Yeah. Uh, that's really oh, okay. I thought I didn't know if this was the same project. So um, let's. I'm just going to go through these first three tabs here because these were. Uh, uh, are these tied to a similar project? Tell us about this one. Yeah, the chainmail. This one was very very beginning <laughs> was when okay. i started with chain mails <laughs> okay just kind but of seeing I, what i live what... in a few months got yeah. it okay and what is oh yeah what is this what one is this this one was um was in PLEA and it's a conceptual piece um it's it's about being in a cage, 
because of the collection was about depression and anxiety. Oh. So, um, <laughs> so are all those pieces individually 3D printed and then you, you connect them somehow? Exactly. I, I, it's like a Lego. I wrote oh. uh, a lot of pieces and then I, I put everything together and mm -hmm. create the dress. Okay, hmm. that is really cool. That is very cool. <laughs> okay, let me switch gears here. We're going to kind of uh, bounce back and forth between you two. So let's look at one of Luisa's projects next. I just need to figure out the quickest way to change my share window here. I think I found it. Okay, here we go. So... Uh, Louisa, tell me what we are looking at here. Okay, uh, this first one, it's about a project, a European project, namely embodiment garment, in which I think that prosthesis are garments. So I, I not in, it's more than just integrate it into a wearable piece. My, but think about the prosthesis and uh, garment as just one. So here you can see a mantle with a upper limb prosthesis, a static upper limb prosthesis. Uh, this was this one was printed through seventeen parts, <sighs> and then I made uh, this uh, one piece. Okay, hold on. I have to show. If you if There's you see video the video, one. we can yeah. see how flexible it, it it is. It seems like a silk. There we go. Let's back this up to the beginning. Jeremy, you got some gray boxes up there. Ah uh, yes, my zoom tools. Thank you. No, there's one right in the middle. Uh, I don't know where that one is coming from, unfortunately. I don't see that on my screen. We'll have to sort that it's out another beautiful. time. It reminds me of a moth, Lisa. It's a mantle. Yeah. Gorgeous. It's so beautiful. Now, is it Very like beautiful. a copper-colored filament? Yeah. No. It's, a, it's PLA. Oh. And then I put it gold. So now that's oh, something yeah, very in, that's something really interesting right there. Just I, I think a lot of our three D printing users that might not be familiar with fashion might be fascinated by this as I am. PLA is thought of as a very rigid material, but because of how you're creating these uh, oh, specific, I'm sorry. yes, because of these but geometries I, yeah, you're creating part of PLA, and also uh, the TPU. It's okay. not just PLA. But still, even even when you're using PLA, you're able to give it flexibility just because it's these thin components and the way you're interconnecting everything gives it that flexibility, which I think is really interesting. Yes. And it's also important to think that we can integrate other kinds of material in, in order to achieve the color that you want. Mm -hmm. For example, the gold filament for me wasn't looks like fake mm -hmm. and I was looking I for something that was more similar to gold so I used white filament and then I applied copper and gold that's very smart I that's, know exactly what you mean uh, about the those gold filaments usually don't look very good so that was very no, smart no don't work very good and as I was thinking about this mental as when we sacralize the member itself, so has to be through gold. Mm, that's beautiful. Mm. Very beautiful. beautiful. Okay, let's take the another that look. I use is that one that you use in, in the church. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm going to switch windows here again. Give me a moment. And let's go back and look at... Uh, there we go. Bear with me as we switch windows here. Okay, so are we, you're seeing the Instagram pages again? Yep. Okay, so here we have another one of Susanna's uh, posts. What are we looking at here, Susanna? This looks like a design process, isn't it? 
Yeah. yeah my um, my first uh, process were um, very manual. <laughs> Oh. That uh, was um, pattern making and drapping, and then convert in digital files. <laughs> now I I do everything digital, but in the beginning I I don't know a lot about software, so I start in that way. <laughs> Very nice. Wow. I'm glad you shared that. And then let's see. So then this next one is the more updated. Uh, <laughs> I see 3D printers here yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, my. My newer 3D printer, and then the most used the Anet. So, is that mainly why you added the new one so you have something larger that you could do bigger pieces with? Yes, and it's more, um, it's because of time, too. Okay, makes sense. Okay, and then let's see, what is this here? This is oh, how digital. you're taking measurements. So you're actually taking measurements now off of a three. So how does this work? Do people get their whole body three D scanned? I I do my own avatars, and um, I take the measures for people, uh, every measure. Um, so I create the avatar, and then I I make the clothes. The clothes. I see. They are stretchy, but uh, I'm an um, old creature lover, <laughs> so I have all this thing about uh, the pattern making and perfectly fit. In yeah, my head. this is this is a really smart way to do it. Yeah, can you imagine if our our ancestors had this technology um, <laughs> back then? How much easier it would have been <laughs> to design clothes. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, wow. let's see. Incredible. I'm going to go back to Luisa's work here. And let's look at another project here of yours. So tell us about this one, Luisa. Now, is this part of what we saw previously or is this different? I'm sorry, this loading. <laughs> oh, sorry. I didn't see anything yet. <laughs> Um, okay, did I share the wrong screen maybe? Let me try again. Ah, yes, I shared the wrong window. Here we go. Oh, yes, but this is, yes, this is part of the product one, but I thought it would be a good opportunity to not just to share, but to highlight that we can also integrate uh, traditional textiles in our printing. Mm -hmm. So this one is also all printed through P with PLA. Wow. And I used some traditional textiles um, to create this arm, which means that from here to here, we have a painty house, horse, painty horse, and from here to here, we have a part printed. Okay. So you can see one piece, but it's a mix set of materials and technologies. So is that a prosthetic hand, 3D printed prosthetic hand? Yeah, it's, it's a like prosthetic a, hand. Like, so for um, cosmetic, like yes. if, if you want to go to a fancy party? Yes. Right. So it doesn't mm. function, it just looks beautiful. Yes. Yeah, I love that. It's a static hand, prosthetic hand. Now, tell mm -hmm. us about, tell me about this a little bit. It says here that it gradually detaches until it takes the form of the interior of the plant, which we're, I guess we're seeing yes, up here. It's the, it's the concept in order to achieve this form. It's like uh, a plant. So I try to sacralize the hand. And as this... Uh, and gradually, this take a form of a, a of a garment. So here we have I I switch some uh, furs and sequins mm -hmm. in the painty horse. Painty horse, yes. <laughs> and then I inter integrated it into a printed part, a PLA, mm -hmm. printed through PLA. 
That's just so beautiful. beautiful. Really is. Yeah, and yes, if someone who doesn't the hand, he can wear. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hmm. here you can see. Yeah, that's Very just amazing. Beautiful. I think we need more of that in the world. Uh, yeah, I agree. Just the idea of uh, a, a, what do you call it? I mean, it's mainly a, a sort of a, 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 I call aesthetic. Embod embodiment garment. Yeah. Say it's, that again. Uh, An yeah, embodiment, embodiment garment? Embodiment garment. Embodiment okay. garment. I love Since, that. Uh, if we think that uh, the amputee, he or she, when she wake up, she took out she put she wears this object and when in during the night she took out this is a garment oh well, <laughs> probably she or he she needs the possibility to have a lot of them mm -hmm. uh, being able to express their personality and i think right. this is what garment can do mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah i think so too I, and, and you know not not just for arms but you know there's there's leg covers for um, yeah, it's not for aesthetic arms. legs and things to, to fill it out in pant legs or whatnot. But, you know, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of amputees and folks who were born without their hands who um, get along fantastically without a prosthetic. But every once in a while, they want to, you know, appear to have two arms if they're going you know to want a party or maybe exactly. just you know to, to balance their bodies out sometimes that's a, a big thing too is trying to get the, the proper weight so that their spines are aligned or um but just being able to you know go to your closet and pick out the gold arm to match your purse today or you know yeah. um, that would be really cool versus just being stuck with one prosthetic design i think 3d printed prosthetics and fashion merging together this way brings a whole new world to a lot of people um this is really amazing it is and that brings us back to what we've talked we've, we've been so excited about 3d printing prosthetics partly because it is so affordable i mean you can it used to be that prosthetic hands cost thousands and thousands of dollars and now we can 3d print them for you know, thirty, forty dollars. You know, typically in in materials, and so you could now. It's very feasible to have five, six, seven of these hands of different colors with different treatments and appearances. Yeah. Yes. Beautiful. Okay, yeah, I'm going to switch back. I'm sorry. Okay, go ahead. Go go. go ahead. <laughs> no, no, okay. I, I was I, I was just saying that uh, it's important to think about the functionality of the object itself. Mm -hmm. And I'm working on it in order to try to have a sensory optic feedback mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. sens uh, textile sensors, pressure and temperature sensors integrated into it. Right. But it's also important to think about the aesthetic. Uh, it topic. is. It right. is. Okay, I'm going to take another look at uh, Susanna's Instagram now and let's see some of these beautiful fabrics here. I would never have guessed that these were 3D printed. Wow. It's all 3D printed. Um, at some point, I, I have more than 50 uh, types of, <laughs> of fabrics. Wow. wow and, just... and you said you use a, a whole uh, bunch of different software programs. It sounds like you kind of just use whichever one happens to fit for the project you're doing. Is that right? Yes. Um, normally, I, 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 I have in mind what I, I need to do, and I choose the software more easier to get the, Got it. the design. Yeah, beautiful. Okay, let's look at another here. Oh, look at that. Colors. Now that really does not look 3D printed. I mean, that yeah. looks like fabric. Wow. wow. So tell us about these. How are these? I mean, obviously they're printed flat, but we're seeing multiple colors here. Are you doing this with dual extrusion? Are you doing this with coloring, adding coloring later? How, what, what's the process? Yeah, single extruder. Uh, for example, in this first one, um, this, this little squares, um, I did design 
to create pixels. So printer <laughs> basically doing dot by dot by dot by dot <laughs> and create the garment. Hmm. That is fascinating. I would never ever guess that was 3D printed ever. Yeah, it really even up close it really doesn't look like it. Amazing. Oh, there's more here. I didn't realize there were multiple pictures in some of these. I should have been going through these. This is creating blind. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I see how they're being laid down and it is very much like like what Louisa was saying. It's very much like that uh, almost like a loom process where it would be layering threads, but it's just doing filament mm -hmm. instead. Yeah. Very cool. So you're 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 increasing the gap. You're basically controlling the, the, the distance between the layers. So normally you're printing something, it would be each line would be right up against the next one and you're you're leaving a gap between these lines and creating these intricate patterns. Beautiful. Beautiful. Okay, I think there's the, the knitting part is even more cool. The which one? Because the the knitting, because the wombs are very this one. Oh wow! So what is? Tell us what this is. So basically, you create um, a lot of little looms to to do and something like a knit that will be really pretty. Mm -hmm. Oh, hold on, I think there's there, other... Oh, okay. There are one video uh, that will show more than... Oh, okay, I think that's this next one. Here we go. Oh, wow. This is very cool because you can see the structure. And oh, um, yeah. you can see clearly what is happening. <laughs> Look at that. Oh. Now, wait a second. I mean, it looks to me like those threads are woven into one another. I, I don't understand how that's being done. Is that just an optical <laughs> illusion? My brain just no, broke. It's, it's really cool. And the colors, I, I never use um, commercial colors because I, I, I have my own filament. And uh, uh, it helps because the colors in market are very awful. Yeah. Wow. That is, is fascinating. I, I really encourage people who are listening to go watch the video because... Um, yeah, I mean, we should be trying to describe what we're looking at here for the audio listeners. We just, I just don't know how we would do that in this case. You, you, yeah, you just have to see it. Going, wow. But yeah, um, yeah these, it looks like a, just a red sweater. <laughs> how yeah. you did that? You are a wizard. I mean, you're stretching and it looks, it's almost like each of the individual thread links are stretching out just like they would in a real fabric. It's just really amazing how it behaves. The okay. Power of creating. I, we, could, we could look at this all day, but I'm going to pull up uh, uh, Luisa's work again. Let's take a look at another one here. So what is this one? Non-woven 3D oh. printing felt. Talk yeah. to us about this, Luisa. Oh. These are the one uh, I choose just to say how we can also um, use different technologies in order to create something. For example, uh, this project, it's a non-woven. Mm -hmm. uh, we used a uh, discard woven and then we did the avelt process and then like a mantle. Mm -hmm through uh, punching, a needle punching machine. This mm -hmm. was the first step. And the second step was to create, a, to print a 3D printing, a 3D fabric. Then we uh, embedded those two layers through this machine that usually made non-woven fabrics, which means that mm -hmm. we didn't print the filament up at the sample, the normal textile, or mm -hmm. we even use some kind of glue. We just mix those two uh, materials mm -hmm. through this uh, pushing needle pushing machine. We integrate those two uh, samples uh, 
to create a non-woven sample. Wow. Just going through the rest of these images here. These are really beautiful. So I I'm, love the fabrics. Uh, and this is a, more to, uh, and this one more to think about uh, the pattern was uh, how to integrate those two technologies. Mm -hmm. and I was going to ask about that. So I want to make sure I understand this. So you're taking it says discarded wool fibers, and how are you incorporating those? Are you actually putting that into filament that you're making, or how, how does that get integrated? No, uh, through this discarded wool, uh, we use this kind of machine that we are seeing, which is a needle punch machine. So th uh, through this okay. machine, we do a valve, and then uh, a, this valve turns into a mantle. So I we have see. this layer. After this layer, we put just uh, put uh, up this uh, what we have previously printed, mm -hmm. and through in the the needle punch pass through those two samples, try embedding those two layers, which means that we do not have a yarn or a wire that pass through this, or we and we also do not have a glue that uh, attached those two layers. It's just the technique, the huh. velvet, the non-woven technique that embedded those two. That's fascinating. <laughs> that, I'm, that's amazing. I never would have thought this to try technique, that. This not, technique, not specifically the pattern, but this uh, material uh, won the um, Honorable mention at uh, International Design Design Award in 2019 wow. in the hmm. textile material category. Wow, that's incredible! That's, that's wonderful. So cool. He was okay. the this project was led by my my friend and I was a researcher. He especially works with non woven. Mm -hmm. And I work with 3D printing, so we hmm. try to put, <laughs> to integrate our knowledges. That's really cool. Very nice. Okay, I'm going to switch us back one more time to take a look at Susanna's projects. I'm going to be looking at stretchy fabrics, is that correct? Uh, let's okay. see. <laughs> what? Do, oh, yes, that's... Whoa! <laughs> Look at that. That is very smushy fabric. And that's 3D printed? Yes. It's very thin, it's very flexible, and you can just smash and uh, put it in the washing machine. <laughs> oh, that's right. We have to talk about this. We, we, this came up in our, in our earlier discussion before this uh, episode. And you were saying that you put your 3D printed fabrics through the washing machine, and you've done that many times. I was amazed that these hold up under that. Yes. Now, other I, I'm assuming you do that for some reason other than just getting them clean. Do you do that to help to sort of soften them up too? No, I um, I realize a, a lot of tests in my fabrics to um, to see the durability and uh, all that. Mm -hmm. So washing them um, are one of the best because I want to show people that if you use pretty printed uh, fashion in a daily basis, you are moved. Yeah, we we lost your audio there a moment. I think that's the internet connection, but it, it sounds like you're saying that this is a way of showing people that they don't have to do anything special if they're incorporating 3D printed fabrics into things that would be worn every day. They can be handled just like My your other clothes. Movie? Now we hear you, Susanna. Uh, you was moved, Susanna. Yeah. Are you back? It sounds oh, like I'm the microphone back. is yeah. coming and going, but now, now we hear you, okay. Now we're here. Okay, so let's look at this next one here. Um, tell us about this, Susanna. If we have you. We're still having some connectivity issues there with Susanna. 
That looks like tissue paper or I, tissue. Again, I, yeah, I would never have believed that these things are 3D printed. This has got to be some of that really soft stuff that she was mentioning. So thin, yeah. only 60 microns. Uh, we heard you for a moment there, Susanna. Say something else. Oh, well, these things happen with live events. We probably are just having some internet connectivity issues, but uh, hopefully that'll fix itself shortly. I'm just going to go ahead and look at our last uh, slide here while we're waiting, because even if I don't get to hear about this and how it was done, I'm just amazed to look at it. Yeah, that looks kind of like a patent leather or something. Yeah, now that one looks like it it might have been done with like a, a super t hero suit. TPU or a TPE, maybe, I'm guessing. Yeah. Susanna, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Susanna, have you tried to, when doing your owl filaments, uh, to use natural fibers? Yeah. Is what I, I said before. Um, yeah, but the concentrate, concentration of natural fibers the the percentage yes well um uh, until now the most i i achieved was 40 percent now what does this mean when we talk about mixing natural fibers are we talking about the natural fibers being mixed into the filament itself as it's being made yes because for example uh for the absor absorption um, it's interesting to input the cotton, for example, or ah. um, mix properties. So you're actually mixing fabric type materials like cotton and others into custom materials that you're making and then putting through the 3D printer. Yeah. <laughs> That's very cool. I don't know that I've ever heard of anybody doing that. I mean, people are doing all kinds of interesting, you know, custom materials. And of course, you hear about people, you know, adding in carbon fiber and glass fiber and those sorts of things. But I have never heard of somebody incorporating things like cotton and other things that have desirable fabric properties. That's really smart. Wow. They're okay. kind of well, okay, I'm going to stop, the, as, as fascinating as this is to look at, I'm going to go ahead and stop the screen share now, because I think we have a, a couple more things we want to have time to talk about, and we're, we're running out of time here, because it's just, there's so much yeah. good stuff to, to look at. But Jen, I'm going to hand things back over to you. Yeah, it was, um, I'm curious how you guys show your work. Are you doing um, fashion shows, art exhibits, um, just online, on social media? Um, how are you sharing your your beautiful creations? Um, let's start with Luisa. Okay. Uh, well, I until now I am sh I am sharing and exploring uh, exhibitions, art exhibitions, mm -hmm. and, and also through my website and also through an international congress. Since I came from a academic background, mm -hmm. so I think this is also a path that I walk. So could be a mix of those. Yeah. What about you, Susanna? So my work is mainly academic, mm -hmm. so it's exposed more in scientific articles, but um, I I start putting uh, in the social media, for example, the Instagram, to show the process and um, catch students for for this area. Mm -hmm. um, I also do some fashion shows, um, exhibitions, um, design biennials. Yeah. I imagine it's interesting. Is it is it a fashion show that is specifically for 3D printed fashion or is yours just the wow factor to everybody else's plain old cotton? <laughs> you can do the both ways. You can show in the regular uh, fashion show and the wow factor. <laughs> and then you can put in the technological um, fashion show. Yeah, 
That's really amazing. I love this. Um, is there is there like a community of people who are focused on 3D printed fabrics? Is it a, or is it a pretty small group around the world? You know, are there just a few of you that are are playing with 3D printed fabrics, or or how you know how big is this um, in the fashion world? Uh, Lisa, do you want to go? Uh, I think it's growing mm -hmm. and uh, day by day we are finding uh, people to connect mm -hmm. and exchange experiences and thoughts and right. learning learning through experience mm -hmm. uh, I think it's growing I think uh, technology it's turning more accessible right and yeah i think it's this mm -hmm. susanna how about you yeah i i agree it's growing a lot and uh, we can see and students that um already ask for to do uh, 3d printed garments and accessories but um in the first i think that was a very small uh, community and we we all uh, know each other um and we keep them but um every day appears a new uh, mm -hmm. a new researcher right is there is there uh like a, an online community for for fabric um, 3D printed fashion kind of, you know, like with Enable, there's, you know, a, a group where everybody can go and, and have like a forum where they can ask questions or share their work. Do you have you guys um, been a part of something like that or does that even exist? Uh, I in, I do not know if Susanna knows since I think uh, I use uh, this technology to materialize and create projects. Mm -hmm. I don't know if I can uh, say that I just print fabrics. Mm -hmm. I think I am more like tur turning uh, in getting form what I think. And sometimes it's more, it's not uh, fabrics. It's not just fabrics. Right. Uh, when talking about community, I am in the naval community mm -hmm. with you guys, but concerning fabrics and textile, I don't, I really don't know. Do you know? Susanna? Sounds like, sounds like I a good opportunity. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know about any specific group about 3D printed fashion. Mm -hmm. We know the designers that work with, but um, it's not something that we just talk <laughs> about. Yeah. Well, I will. I yeah. will tell you without a doubt. This very recording here is going to inspire other people to get involved with three D printing fabrics. Yeah. So there will come a time, I'm sure, where we will see these kinds of online communities and collaboration. Yeah, definitely. Um, where do you guys see three D printed fabrics going in the future? Uh, Susanna. Uh, so <clears throat> when we talk about the future of fashion. Mm -hmm. I, I believe that is necessary to prioritize the comfort. That's mm -hmm. why I'm incorporating natural fibers and um, keep pushing the boundaries in flexibility. And um, initially, 3D printed fashion is very conceptual. Mm -hmm. uh, if you thought about uh, Iris Van Arpen or um, even Danit Peleg, um, you you see very rigid uh, garments so you, you're not you can imagine we uh, using in the daily basis mm -hmm. and now we also talk a lot of, uh, about metaverse uh, but people still have to wear real clothes to go <laughs> yeah. out on the street <laughs> mm -hmm. and um, it's a, a little about the um, I think this the, the additive manufacturing is a great technology to to keep things sustainable, but um, we really should 
think in in this about um to, to keep simple mm -hmm. i don't know if i can explain better because it's something that i tell before uh, we go to amazing and complex forms but um, maybe it's just to think what we already were because if i put in uh, to a consumer um very extravagant uh, coat for example um you can wear uh, in met gala but <laughs> <laughs> anything else you know, I, I think what's so fascinating here, and I don't I, I hope I don't oversimplify your work, but it seems that you two have explored different dimensions of this because I heard Louisa talking about how you actually went to 3D printing in order to bring more rigidity and more structure so that you could get forms that you couldn't get with the fabrics. And Susanna, you're kind of working in the other direction, trying to get these 3D printed fabrics as soft and pliable and comfortable as possible. And I think that's wonderful that there's these totally different dimensions and different ways that you can use this technology. Yeah. 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 I was really think about this when Susanna was talk, was talking. Yeah. <laughs> so how about you, Louise? So where do you see this going in the future? Oh, uh, I totally agree with Susanna concerning materials. We we need really need to achieve and develop more comfortable filaments, which means increase the percentage of natural fibers and decrease the percentage of polymeric bases uh, in order to have thermal regulation properties, uh, decrease the, the friction coefficient of the, the textile itself, which means try to mimic in all comfort aspects what is a uh, common textile. Uh, I think this is a very important goal to achieve. Mm -hmm. And when we have achieved this, we can do what, what we, wherever you want, we want. We can do this fluid form or simple form uh, model, as Susanna was saying, or you can also use this property filament in order to create a complex form. Yeah. Since special it is, is it is uh, you can use uh, the empowerment of a garment to establish uh, and say what you are. And sometimes mm -hmm. you are wearing a garment uh, for the Met Gala, and you can use wherever you want. And sometimes you can you can once you can use just a t-shirt, and maybe your white t-shirt should be printable right I, yeah i i think there's a lot of um a lot of fashion in in our everyday lives where you know you've got the friend who you can always rely on them that they, they have sequins on something they're wearing or <laughs> fur or you know they're they're like the belt girl like they've got you, you, 500 different belts <laughs> you know what just before since we're, we're already running a little long here but since you mentioned fur jen i just realized i i've got to share this one last video and this was uh uh susanna's right so let me let me just play this because this is amazing it's incredible so what are we seeing here, Susanna? We are seeing uh, my recent uh, achievement is 3D printed fur. So oh, cool. This is unbelievable. So I, I just can't get over this, that this is, I don't know how much you can go into. I mean, I'm sure you can't share some of the details, but it looks to me like it has a lot to do with the, using the right material and then are you, how are you doing these threads? Are you just extruding kind of upwards? Are you doing custom G code? Uh, can you tell us anything about how you're doing it? I I can tell because I, I waste two years uh. to bring that. <laughs> you not waste. No. no. Not waste it. It's not waste. Uh, waste. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I'm really proud of my fur. <laughs> you should be. That is amazing. It doesn't it is look amazing. 3D. I don't even. I can't even grasp how that works. How the 3D I, so, printed. 
Anything. I mean, I know that you, we probably wouldn't even have, have time to go through the details here because we're already running late, but you mentioned that you focus in academic circles mostly. Are you going to be writing this up? Is there going to be a, a paper that kind of lets people know how they can do this kind of thing? Yeah. Wonderful. I will put everything in papers. <laughs> Good. That's fantastic because that I have never seen before. That is truly unique. Mm -hmm. Just amazing. I, I would never have guessed that came out of a 3D printer. Never. Mm -mm. No. Well, we are going to have to wrap up. We This is one of those things where we could literally talk all, all evening, but I know it's already late for the two of you in Portugal. So um, let's talk about where people can go to learn more and see your work and follow your work. Can you give us some websites and addresses where people can go to find you? And we'll we'll be sure to sort of share these links with the recording as well. But uh, let's start with you, Luisa. Where can people go to find you? Uh, they can find more about uh, the work that I am developing concerning the Environment Garment project at the Environment Garment Instagram. And uh, concerning my work about uh, textiles itself, it's on Fibernamics website, fibernamics.com. Excellent. And we'll include those links with the recording. Suzanne, how about you? So, um, behind the papers, <laughs> you can follow in LinkedIn and uh, mostly in Instagram that I put a lot of process and um, daily <clears throat> in, the, in the web. Um, and currently my website is down, but I will try <laughs> put everything uh, online again. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. But for now, Instagram will, will get people to your work, and I'm sure you'll link them to your website when that's up again. So terrific. We'll include all those links for people. Um, Jen, you want to? Do we have any questions? Thank you for the reminder, Jen. I knew I would need a reminder. <laughs> Let me go take a peek at our Facebook page. I was supposed to be monitoring this throughout the episode, but as I figured I might, I just got too fascinated with what we're doing here. <laughs> so we just it looks like just a couple of comments, but we do have one question here. You're getting some compliments about how amazing your work is. No surprise there. How durable are these fabrics compared to the fabrics we're used to? And we I think we covered that a little bit as we were talking about the, the machine washing, but let's, let's talk about that just for a minute. Tell us about how durable these are. Um, can we start with you, Susanna? Yeah. Um... I, I think that is even more durable than the common mm -hmm. because for example in my in my jeans um, in the inner part of the legs um, I I usually have some uh, um, I don't know how to how to say um, because they are uh, <laughs> it's missing the words um, so just to to try to explain i put um part of my fabrics in the inner part of jeans to keep them because they are um are they wearing... more durable than the jeans yeah because in that part for example uh, start to rushing i think mm -hmm. okay it start i know how yeah. jeans can start to wear through and they get thin yeah. and threadbare and so it sounds like you're using these 3d printed fabrics to reinforce <laughs> your jeans that's yeah, pretty amazing it fix my clothes in general <laughs> that's amazing I, and again this is i think this is the first i've heard of 3d printed fabrics being used outside of you know the runway is great it, it gets people to see that this is possible but it's always felt like it was a little bit of a I don't know, a gimmick almost, whereas you're, you're actually using fabrics to fix clothing. I mean, that's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. yeah, I've got a pair of jeans that I've had since I was 17 and I'm 48 now. And uh, there's a spot on my rear end that might need some help. There we go. <laughs> I'll get you some stretchy 3D printed fabric. Yes. Well, I know we are going to see more amazing work from both of you, and I look forward to that. I, I'm so glad you, you could both join us for this yeah, today. And thank you Jim, for joining us. I've been yeah. fascinated with it for a long yeah. time. 
Really wonderful. And thank you for uh, uh, helping us through the discussion, Jen. And thank you, everyone, for watching. Please uh, visit 3duniverseuntethered.com to see uh, any recordings as well as upcoming episodes. We've got lots more great guests and content for you coming up. And uh, we will see you next time. Thank you, everyone. Yes. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Thank Bye. you both.